Good morning chaps. Today's video will be on the FV3802 and the FV3805 self-propelled guns built on modified Centurion chassis. Following the Second World War, the UK created the FV numbering series for categorising its vehicles. This would later include the Centurion which had its A number, A41, dropped and became the FV4007. This number, although higher and later than even some of the vehicles with Centurion parts, and at odds from the standard system envisioned, lay with the fact that following the war, the fate of Centurion was far from secure. A45 was the universal tank, and the Centurion was even considered for phasing out of service by late 1947. Thus, unlike the FV200 or FV300, she's much further down the naming list. The British system had each vehicle given a stock number, and the subsequent numbers were to be modifications based on that chassis. Each of the prime classes was to have multiple versions, from armoured recovery vehicles to sub-propelled guns both in light and heavy roles, such as the FV304 with a 25-pounder and the FV305 with a 5.5-inch gun, the latter getting no further than the weapon being tested on the Crusader hull for comparative data. With the popularity of the FV-201 Universal Tank fading during the late 1940s, it became apparent that Centurion could be well suited for conversion, and the UK did lack its own suitable large calibre self-propelled guns, relying on US equipment such as the M40 Cardinal. The tender was picked up by Leylands, who set about designing a new series of platforms based on these Centurion hulls, again in a light and heavy gun layout. The first of these was the FV-3802. This was a 25-pounder gun mounted in a rear-facing arrangement on a Centurion hull, with very high angles of elevation for effective bombardment over ridgelines and a large ammunition capacity. The hull itself was shortened, with one road wheel removed for five in total. An initial wooden mock-up model was made, which gave the vehicle its rough shape, and itself bore a striking resemblance to the proposed Cromwell self-propelled gun, which was also to mount a 25-pounder gun in a rear-facing casemate, but was never built. A large wooden mock-up was then made, and the driver was now situated in the casemated structure on the right-hand side, with a large drop-down hatch with a single slit visor, and to his left, a man-sized door for quick access to the vehicle. This would allow the vehicle to quickly shoot and scoot, and be facing more or less in the right direction. The gun itself was in a demi-cylinder mount with excellent traverse to either side and, due to the large casemate, was able to elevate and depress to very high angles. The vehicle was simply known as P1 and was extensively tested and then abandoned. Its fate remains unknown. However, the 25-pounder, while it had fared adequately in the Second World War, was lacking in weight of shot compared to larger guns and the British desired something of a larger calibre in the form of the 5.5 inch or 140mm gun, and so the heavier system would be used in a similar arrangement of a casemated Centurion called FV3805P2. A boilerplate mock-up of the vehicle was built which originally had a different casemate layout and the driver had more of a pod design to the side which was later removed. The headlights and so forth were mounted on the rear plate the finalised wooden mock-up version came next and now had a very large rear door consisting of an upper and lower part split in the middle to allow easy access for the crew to fight in an open position and below the door was a deployable blade to offer stability during firing which folded up behind the closed door. The vehicle, while outwardly similar, had some differences primarily to accommodate the larger gun. The driver was now moved to the upper centre left side in a somewhat offset position facing over the vehicle's rear. But unlike the FV3802 that still drove front to back, this version drove backwards as it were, and the gearbox, a Z52, was taken in reverse from a Conqueror tank. This gave the vehicle high speed forwards, or backwards depending how you look at it, and slower vice versa, but due to the driver's position and poor rear vision, made reversing a bit of a nightmare as she was blind on three quarters of the vehicle. The gun itself was a 5.5 inch breech loading quick firing piece which had seen service throughout the Second World War as a static piece and at 6.1 tons was considered a heavy field gun, able to fire a 100 pound shot to about 14 kilometers. Several changes were made. 
The gun was mounted in an A-frame inside a semi-spherical rotating platform inside the casemate, giving good traverse arcs. It was also considered that the vehicle might have to directly engage armour in a pinch, and so a 5.5-inch Hesh round was also added to the vehicle's capability. Each vehicle would have 35 high-explosive regular or supercharged rounds and 5 high-explosive Hesh rounds. Finally, a full working prototype was built and sent for testing. Several major errors were highlighted. The A-frame, which held the 5.5-inch gun, was found to have suffered several micro-fractures after firing, and the base plate itself was badly damaged. Other issues noted were that at high elevation the gun could not be loaded, and if the crew needed to bail out, they would be unable to if the rear dozer blade was up as the door at the back would get stuck. Her fate was sealed shortly after during a tripart meeting, in which it was decided to adopt the common NATO calibre of 105mm and 155mm, which spelt the end of the FV3805, as the former could be mounted in a smaller platform and the latter was too large. Following this, she ended up for a few years at Shubrinus Ranges in the early 1970s, where she was initially used as an ammunition carrier being loaded up with different rounds for whatever they were testing down on the ranges that day and lugging the rounds down over the sands to the firing ranges with a small trailer. Those that served on her days as a mule remember none too fondly how difficult she was to drive, primarily due to the lack of vision in the very cramped driver's section. She was later converted to an artillery observation vehicle for range work. Her gun was removed and the aperture welded over with an armoured glass visor in place and much of her internals had been stripped out and the dozer blade removed. After being painted a distinctive duck egg blue, she was renamed Major Picton's Palace, named after the late Major Ian Picton who had been charged with the A-section trials, and also due to the fact that it was a cosy, windproof shelter and had a heater on board, a welcome change from the biting wind down on the open ranges. She then ended up at the yard at Duxford Museum for several years, suffering exposure to the elements before finally ending up on the Isle of Wight, where she remains today very much left outside to deteriorate. Despite some early effort work being done to raise funds to restore her, as of 2020, no further work appears to have been carried out. Well guys, that's the end of the tale of the FV3805 and 3802. I hope you enjoyed this little ramble on the subject. If you want to know more, do ask below and uh, hit and like that subscribe button and I will try and find some more interesting topics for you next time. Until then, toodle pip.